Bubba Wallace had he finished his second. He's proud of it. Of course, everybody didn't like getting their butt kicked by Kyle Larson. And Bubba flips the bird to the TV screen at the, uh, during his interview. I suppose I didn't see it, but uh, I saw it on social media. And apparently, some fans had gotten on his radio at the end of the race. And uh, were, yeah, I heard ra- this. yeah, and were raising hell and saying some pretty bad. Yeah, shit. and so um, I thought, you know, I thought that was bad, uh, and. I remember back in the day, people we used to get on our radios um, and say some pretty pretty stupid things. But um, I've always felt like that <clears throat> when we – this isn't going to be popular among our fans because they love the access, but when I started driving race cars, our radio frequency was a – it was a private conversation. There weren't scanners, fans in the stands. There might have been a few fans that understood that technology enough to be able to have a scanner in their hand, but there were so few. The conversation on the radio was between you and the team. You said anything you wanted. And you could, you know, you didn't have to be secret about your decisions. Open communication, everything was, you know, you talked about whatever was going on. And I was in, I was around the sport long enough to where it completely developed from that, which I know that's probably hard for people to even wrap their brain around. Surely, surely not. Surely there was all kinds of access. There's always been access. No. When I was a rookie, when I was racing in the Xfinity Series, not many people were listening to your radio. And then, you know, scanners become more popular. Then you could rent a scanner, and then now they're basically just handing out scanners, and now they're emailing you every driver's radio frequency you could program your own damn scanner and it's basically just a free-for-all it, that's what it's kind of transitioned to mm-hmm. and i never loved that um i never loved it because i i i you know i cussed a lot uh i had embarrassing moments on the radio fighting with tony jr that now were public fodder and 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 even going on broadcast during the races right they were in marketing campaigns. Right. <laughs> Your and, stuff. Yeah. And so I didn't, it, I wasn't, you know, I had to change. I had to, I had to start minimizing what I wanted to say, what I thought about. I had to start controlling what I would say and think about knowing that it would be um, used against me in some way. Um, and then there were those times when we were at Talad, we were at Daytona during the July race one night, some fans on the radio clear you're mm-hmm. all clear mm-hmm. and we're like three wide and they're you know they're like jokingly spotting us into a crash trying to trying to some way get us to make a mistake um there was another race they were hollering park it you need to park it you need to get off the track you know um this <clears> happened <throat> to quite a bit at daytona daytona yeah. somebody out there <laughs> had had, had yeah. for years yeah could have been the same guy I think it was. So, um, but yeah, I was I was disappointed. I I'll, I'll tell you, man. And I, I <clears throat> Bubba Wallace puts up with more hmm. um, than anybody deserves. And I wanted to make uh, one particular experience known. I was at Darlington, right? A couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, we're at Darlington. We're on this stage, and it's the seventy-five greatest drivers all lined up, and Outside of me, I mean, these these are the greatest drivers that have been involved in the sport, all distinguished of varying ages. Everybody's there to have this great experience, and the drivers are being introduced and walking by us and shaking our hand one after the other. And it's this moment where, like, you know, everybody, you would think that, you know, people would, it would be a moment where you'd behave. It's a positive vibe, you yeah. would think, Yeah. Every and there's this one guy at the rail, the rail of the fans that are down on the front straightaway. There's one guy at the rail, and everybody for the most part is just cheering. And you know, there there's a couple they give, give you know a couple people a hard time, Denny and all that. Just some you know just ma- smothering of booze and nothing crazy, right? But Bubba gets introduced and he walks across the stage, and there's this guy right in front of me and Carl Edwards and Matt Kenseth and everyone else there screaming at the top of his lungs, go home, go home, 
go home over and over as loud as he could. And it was like so obnoxious. I was, I really wanted to jump down there and go, hey, could you stop? Do you, is this really how you, what you want to do right in this moment? Is this, is this how you want to behave right now in front of all of these incredible, you know, people that are standing, you're, you're standing in front of, you're Richard Petty and all of these legends, you're going to be acting this way? Um, and I thought, man, I, it, and that, that's one day in Bubba's life. You know, and I was thinking, I know that there's people out there that have hated Kyle Busch and hated other drivers, and that they probably have said some nasty things, but it just made me really um, disappointed. Anyways, um, and I've been hesitant to, to talk to Bubba about it because I thought that otherwise, outside of that moment, Sunday at North Wilkesboro, Bubba was smiling. I had, you know, I feel good about our run. We got our butt kicked by Kyle. I'm I'm glad that we're running well, and I'm looking forward to the next race. And I didn't want to text him the next day and bring him back down and go, man, I hate hate what I saw you go through at Darlington. That really that really was an eye opener for me. And I hope you um I hope hope you don't let you know all of those things bother you too badly. But <clears throat> it was it was um it was disappointing, and I hate you know hate that fans go through those go to those links to jump on his radio. And I mean that took some effort to saw, get to get the access to be able to do that. I saw a video clip, an <clears throat> interview of Bubba this past weekend, and a reporter actually asked him the questions that you're wanting to ask him. And it's like, you know, does it bother you? And Bubba's answer was, "Would it bother you?" And the guy said, "Yeah, it bothered me." He goes, "All right." And Bubba also said, "This is every week." Yeah, he goes, "It's every week." So uh, that's an interesting story that you told. I, that's it, it made me uncomfortable. And I wasn't even there. So it makes me uncomfortable just yeah. knowing that, yeah, Richard Petty, like the legends here, sitting there, and that's how this guy was. Behave, a, but yeah, I mean, the guy was young. He was like you know mid twenties, and and just and the whole every other driver came through there, and he reacted just like everyone else. But when Bubba walked up there, it was like this: he couldn't be loud enough. He it couldn't he could not say it as any you know he couldn't be more obnoxious. I'm of the mind that uh, the, you drivers, and you will tell me probably that I'm wrong, but uh, I think all of you drivers, you, you hear the one boo, even if it's one boo or yeah. two boos, I think you hear them, yeah. and I think it bothers you all. Oh, yeah. And I know that most of them go, yeah, don't bother me. Hey, they're doing something. Denny said it this past week. Denny got, Denny's mom was on last week's podcast, and it bothered her that not at driver intros, but in the 75 top driver intros, he got booed. Yeah, they Like, you think you'd save it for the, at least recognize yeah. the honor that that is. And yet she was like, you know, hearing them boo bothered her. Of course it does. You're human, right? Yeah. And that's her son. But the fact of the matter is, is that I think it does actually take a psychological toll. And, uh, you know, most people just don't admit it. I think that, but, um, I think that Denny can um, rest in the, I think Denny and his mother could could take a little comfort in knowing that once he does retire, and especially when he goes into Hall of Fame, the people that are booing will no longer boo. Even the people that – this is an interesting thing I was telling somebody about this weekend. When a driver retires or goes in – or and goes into the Hall of Fame, like a Kyle Busch, a Denny, myself, um, the people that booed you didn't like you – will say, hey, man, I wasn't a fan of yours, but I really appreciate what you, you know, did for the sport. They, they, when you're a competitor on the track, they're, they're transparent, right? Yeah. I hate you, and I like you. This is my guy, and, they, and I really don't like this guy, and I'm going to – I'm wearing that on my sleeve. But when that, when, when that guy that they don't like hangs up that helmet, they – their their reaction and, and and engagement with that person at a racetrack or whenever they might run into them is completely different. They don't boo a retired. They don't you know they don't boo any of the retired guys. They don't boo any of them. They haven't been drinking all day at the racetrack. <laughs> the, the people that were likely. booing the the people that were booing the active drivers like Denny were not booing any of the retired drivers that were on that same stage. I got you. I know what your point is. Yeah. Even the ones they didn't like. Well, it's, does it come with the territory? 
Well, the booing and and yeah, I mean, if you, I think what a lot of people would say, you're making a good life. You got, you know, your drivers, yeah. you know, <clears throat> you don't you don't have rights to complain. People can boo you. You'll you'll be fine. Is that yeah. is that a fair argument or no? Um, I, I'm not trying to justify what happened to Bubba. By the way, yeah, that's that's crossing the line. That, I yeah. that, I feel awful about that myself. But I'm just saying, is it? I think it affects you guys, but I also think that you guys know that it comes with the territory. You're a, a professional athlete in a very yeah. public setting, right? I guess. So now we're talking about something a little different, yeah. than what but, what Bubba deals with. But right, um, I think I'm I'm surprised by the way they boo Denny. I am because the guy is and guys creating a podcast, which is content, which is an effort to to engage with fans, an effort to give fans more than just you know being a being a being a character on the racetrack. Um, so I'm a bit surprised by it. And, you know, the, and Denny, Denny just smiles and, and says, you know, darn, you know what, oh, oh, this is my life, the way it is, the way it is right now. And it, you know, so the way he reacts to the booze, I think is good and would change the booze, make the booze go away. Like Kyle Bush, um, now I felt like, and I'm I mean, I'm on a I'm in a different place with all of that because I was involved in some of it. But I felt some of the things, some of the criticism that he got and the booze that he got from the fans were justified. You know, he kind of brought it on. Yeah, yeah. Like he did things that were like, oh, all right, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know, wrecking, wrecking Horner Day and right. You know, flipping off NASCAR and on pit road and. You know, he just did. He did a series of things that I felt like, insta, you know, in, didn't steer fans toward cheering. They steered more fans toward, you know, being aggravated with him and frustrated with him and criticizing. And um, now, though, it's funny you ask because I wanted I forgot to mention this. Now, though, um, to Kyle Busch's credit, he has made a big effort. To turn that around, I think that him, and I think that him and his very very close inner circle have been making a great effort to show that he's charming, he's funny, he's you know he doesn't take himself too seriously on social media. Him and his him and his family make all these you know Instagram posts and stories and stuff, just goofing around, having a good time. He's a great dad going to race with his son. He's exposing that part of his life saying, hey, man, you know, I'm not this villain all day, every day. You just get these little clips at the racetrack. So he's working really hard, I think, and I got to give him some credit. Also, he goes to RCR, a team that everybody wants to cheer for. Everybody, oh, man, you know, that's that's RCR. Good history there. They've been, you know, people have been wanting RCR to have a driver worth you know, that, that they expect to be up front. You know, Austin's been struggling to kind of be that guy. And um, so everybody had these high hopes with with Kyle Busch going to RCR. All the RCR fans are energized. And he's over in a Chevrolet, um, very apple pie sort of brand. So we're sitting there on the stage in Darlington, and Kyle Busch walks across, we're shaking hands, and the fans were cheering. And Kyle, <laughs> Carl, Carl Edwards looked at me and goes, what in the hell is that all about? <laughs> he, he, <laughs> it's not how he remembers it. No. I said, Carl, I said, Kyle went to drive for RCR and Chevrolet, and all is forgiven. He thinks he's asleep. He thinks he's dreaming something. He goes, what the hell? This yeah. ain't adding up. I told him. I said he went to RCR and drove a Chevrolet, and all was forgiven, buddy. And so he was taken aback by that. And then he's like, "See, was I think he might have been a little surprised by it. It was kind of like everything that Kyle used to get, now Denny gets." And and anyhow, yeah. <clears throat> I thought that was so funny, and I forgot to tell you about that. That's good. 